The best way to describe what we do at Lab Genius is we're combining the best of human ingenuity and machine intelligence to accelerate the discovery of next generation antibody therapeutics. In particular, we're focused on inflammatory diseases and cancer, and those are two areas that a lot of people suffer from around the world, and therefore we can have a huge impact. Our main approach is to build a robotic platform that automates the experiments that we need to do. Behind me, we have a selection of robots that we run every day to produce proteins, characterize them, and we use that data to feed into machine learning models that we build. We really have two objectives when we think about using machine learning. One objective is what we call co-optimization or multi-objective optimization. You might be trying to optimize its potency, which might be ultimately about its affinity, so how sticky it is to its target. But at the same time, you don't want to destroy its safety. Perhaps there's some other characteristic of the molecule, like its stability, that you don't want to destroy. Secondarily, we use machine learning to make suggestions about what to do next, what experiments to run. And so what a model is doing in that case is looking across all of the possible things that we could change about the molecule, mostly its sequence, but there are other things like the way multiple molecules are attached to each other. And it's making suggestions about what to design next, what to try next in an experiment to learn the most about a change in the input and how that maps to a change in the output. GraphCore allowed us to speed up our experimentation process quite a bit. Previously we used GPUs and it took us about a month or so to have a V1 of the functioning model of all of the proteins that are out there. With GraphCore we reduced the turnaround time to about two weeks so that we can experiment much more rapidly and uh, we can see the results quicker. The problem in the biological space is the scarcity of data, so you want to extract as much information as possible from the data that you have. The way we approach this problem is we take all of the proteins that are out there, curating those, and then throw those at BERT to predict the masked amino acids from the training data. And that way, the model is learning the basic biophysics of proteins. And so because it does that, it can generate the hidden values of that model, help us to generate meaningful representation of proteins that we subsequently use to map out the feature of interests. We took the PyTorch implementation of BERT that GraphCore did, and we didn't really have to tweak a lot of code. What we focused on at this project stage was data curation and changing the data sets to our needs, so trying to make sure that we have a generalizable representation of the protein universe. And the beauty about this PyTorch implementation is that it allowed us to iterate on the data set uh, that we use for training quite rapidly, which really untied our arms so that we could have different tests and compare different curations of the data. We would be returning to IPUs again and again, because whenever we need to retrain the BERT model, we would need those capabilities. And it's not like more data are added and we would just retrain from scratch. We would always need to make sure that the representation of the protein base is generalizable and concise enough, and that the data that have been added to the open source databases make sense from the point of view of our applications. This is currently quite an experimental project that we're working on, but we're looking to implement the embeddings that we have trained with BERT into everything starting from the hit discovery to lead optimization. So for instance, we are looking into adding that capability to understanding the developability of our molecules, but also um, you know, the discovery stage so that we can optimize the discovery libraries a little bit better.